Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I invite each and every one to confess the declaration of truth that says the reason that we live is to worship the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I know and I do believe that uh, we know that our purpose, we know that the reason that we live, the reason of our coming here today is to worship the Lord. Amen, church? Amen? And uh, before we continue, can I ask each and every one to just, um, can we give the Lord the best clap offering that we can afford? Thank you for the life, Father God, of all the people that you have used here this morning. And thank you, Lord, for the life of each and every one that you have brought in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And um, can we welcome each and every one? Because I know and I do believe that there are a lot of us in here who probably are seeing others for the first time. Let's break the ice. Can we just turn around to someone and give them the best smile that we can give? Welcome. 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 We are blessed to see you. Okay? Welcome. Welcome. We are blessed. We are blessed to see you. We are blessed to see each and every one. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest and peace to all His people here on earth. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, it is your time now. Indeed, Father, the reason that we live is to worship you. Indeed, Father God, that there is no greater calling, there is no greater purpose than to worship you, than to shout, Hallelujah! Indeed, a very simple phrase, but it is very profound. Hallelujah, Almighty! Hallelujah to the King of Kings! Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords! Indeed, hallelujah. Father, thank you so much for all the good things that you have allowed us to experience this afternoon. We know and we do believe that you are not finished yet. Lord, we are expectant of your movement. We are expectant, Father, that you are going to talk to us today through your words. And thank you very much, Father God, because your word is unique. Because your word, although it can come to the church corporately, but Lord, you know that all the people are gathering here today, including people who are gathering online, has unique needs of you. And thank you very much because, Lord, each and every one of us by faith, will receive a portion from you this afternoon. Most gracious Lord and heavenly God, I continue to humble myself in your presence. I continue to pray that you hide me behind you so that all these people, all my brothers and sisters, won't just be mere staring and looking at this flesh stood here in front. But Lord, the glory that is behind me, the grace in mercy that is only the reason in purpose that I can stand here today. Lord, we pray for the open heavens. Pour out your revelation and your anointing upon this pulpit and to all the lives of the people whom you have gathered here today and to the lives of the people who are joining us in online. We bless your name, O God. We are excited of your revelation as we return all praises, glory and honor, adoration and exaltation. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, before we begin, I just want to honor the Lord. I just want to say hallelujah to the King of Kings. I just have a quick testimony. Glory to God in the highest because... Coming here today, I was limping. 
I was limping my left knee. What happened is, we were around London yesterday. We probably um, walked throughout London and all um, the pain as well. And going up and down, climbing up and down those tube stations. And I felt last night that my knee is starting to play up. And when I wake up this morning, wow, my knee is immovable. It is really sore. It is really painful. So what I have done is I put an ice in it. And I have taken painkillers and pain relievers in it. But don't get me wrong. Obviously associated with that, prayed for it. And maybe... I did not prepare for it. I was going down the stairs to the point that I think my knee is not trusting it, so I twist it further. I shouted, and all the people uh, with me in the house was worried, got startled. I was really blessed that I did not actually land in the floor, but it was really painful, and then I was limping. And coming here, Sorry, guys, to all the people who were here earlier on that I was not able to help much as usual because my knee is just really, it's an agony. And thank you, Lord, because the life of all the men who were here this morning, uh, David hushed them and said, come, come, let's pray for faster. And they prayed for me and, hallelujah, let's play football. <laughs> Let's pray football. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason that we live is to worship the Lord. But the, Lord, the word of the Lord says, all the good gifts comes from heaven above. Amen. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Be encouraged. You're probably sitting here with a painful knee as well. I don't know. Or you're probably sitting here with whatever various issues and concerns that you have. But my dear brothers and sisters, let us put our faith in the Lord. Let us put our faith in the Lord. There is nothing impossible in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, this weekend, that's the reason why we have a Filipino flag in there. And uh, to all those uh, brethren who were here before we start, uh, we were able to uh, sing our national anthem or the Philippine national anthem as well. So I believe that uh, all of us are quite feeling uh, Filipino loyal this afternoon. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? this weekend, Filipinos in the country and overseas, including all their affiliates, are celebrating the Philippine Independence Day. In London, uh, in Honslow, yesterday and today, there is that annual big celebration in Honslow. Um, uh, there is that big annual celebration that is being organized by um, the uh, Philippine Embassy together with their affiliates. And I am blessed to see you here today. Amen. I am blessed to see you here today. I was praying that, Lord, let your church be filled. Because I'm wondering that probably you will be there. But glory to God in the highest. Because the reason that you live indeed is to worship the Lord. Amen. And uh, if you are in Honslow right now, and you are tuning in with us, we pray in the spirit that you will receive from the Lord today as well. Amen. And like what we've said, we celebrate this Philippine Independence Day because of what happened 125 years ago where the Filipino revolutionaries, they stood in that Cavite, province of Cavite, and they declared the independence of the Philippine Islands from the oppression from the colonial rule of the Spanish Empire, after nearly 400 years, 
And after 400 years, on that day, 125 years ago, the Philippine flag was waved for the very first time. And my dear brothers and sisters, that indeed, you know, changed, it changed the feeling of all the people during that time. It changed the feeling of all the people during that time. All the people freed, I mean, felt that they were free. And actually, you know, because it says in there that in 1898, after that Philippine independence was declared by the Philippine revolutionary, it will actually take further three years before the Americans finally have driven away the Spanish and liberated us completely. And as always, the freedom of the Philippines comes under the guise of the Americans. And let us look at what does that independence have given us. Maybe if you do not have interest to Philippine history, you do not know much what has been happening in the Philippines. But Filipinos, if we rely on history during those 400 years of colonial rule, tell me, was there a liberty among the Filipino people? Was there a freedom? All those 400 years, there is none. Is there life within those 400 years? There is none. Is there happiness among the people within those 400 years? There is none, my dear brothers and sisters. So that Philippine Independence Day, 125 years ago, it gives Filipinos their well-deserved pursuit of life, pursuit of liberty and freedom, and their pursuit of happiness. Is that not what an independence is supposed to bring? Amen? Do you agree with me? Amen? That's what supposed that independence would bring. And as we look at this, uh, as we look at this, this afternoon, in a Christian perspective, my dear brothers and sisters, we are living here in one of the greatest country in the world. Do you agree? We are living here in one of the richest, one of the finest, and one of the most blessed country in the world. And that country is the UK. Or in general, the country in the West. The country in the West are known as the most blessed, the most richest. The country where there is life, there is liberty, there is pursuit of happiness. Do you agree with me? Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, no? If we look at life, remember what does that independence gave us? It gives us access to life. Liberty and pursuit of happiness. If we look at life, my dear brothers and sisters, I know that it is not a secret to all of us that some people do not enjoy living. More people die from suicide comparing to homicide. Are you aware of that? that more people actually die by killing themselves rather than being killed by someone else. More people die from suicide more than homicide. The latest world statistic shows that there are 9,000 suicide in the world comparing to 5,560 homicide per 100,000 population. So my dear brothers and sisters, many people do not enjoy living. And why is that? 
Could it be that the environment are so full of violence and hatred and murder? Have you ever wondered how many people live with anxiety, with depression? These are non-visible conditions. Last week's testimony was an eye-opener to all of us. That we need to be more vigilant. Could it be that the people that the Lord put amongst us is suffering silently? And that is the reason why that you are placed where you are in order to be the Lord's instrument to the life of these people. Have you ever wondered how many people live on the verge of insanity with multifactorial issues? Some people, this is a fact, some people cannot even leave their homes without being in fear. Without being anxious. Could it be that many people around us, that every second in their life, every hour of their given life, are scared, are anxious, or it could be that they are in pain? You know, in the UK alone, majority of us works within the healthcare sector. And in the UK alone, there are a lot of people suffering from chronic pain. That is the reason why that the government, the NHS, allocated a unique department for them, just for them. It's called the Pain Management Services. It just shows that a lot of people are suffering from pain, my dear brothers and sisters. Could it be that people's lives are filled with difficulties? Or we called it, don't get me wrong, we called it dramas of life. Because of alcohol, because of drugs, and other, other types of vices, and other types of addictions. You know that millions of people all over the world are subdued by substance abuse. A lot of people in the world are subdued by substance abuse. My dear brothers and sisters, in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says in there, Jesus said that the thief comes not to steal, the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you may have life, that you may have it abundantly, it says in there. The thief cometh not, but to Still to kill and to destroy. And who is that thief, my dear brothers and sisters? Anyone? Who is that thief? Satan, the devil. The thief is no other than Satan, the devil. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, it says in there that the devil or Satan is that great dragon. That old serpent who has been deceiving the world since the beginning of time. And that Satan and that devil is the deceiver who has been deceiving the world since the beginning of time. He is the thief who does not have no other purpose but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John 8, 44, it says in here that the same thief, that this devil is the murderer from the beginning. And he does not stand in the truth because the truth is not in him. Whenever this liar, whenever this thief, whenever Satan, the great dragon, the great serpent speaks, 
He speaks His native tongue, which is lie. Every time that Satan, the devil, the thief speak, it speaks lie. And we have been talking that although independence give us that freedom to live, but a lot of people do not enjoy living because of all the conditions that we have listed and mentioned about. But our struggle, my dear brothers and sisters, is not against flesh or blood, but against principalities, against spiritual forces, against demonic and satanic forces in heavenly places. And that is no other than the devil and his cohorts. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is that devil that is deceiving and lying for people to give up life. Jesus himself says that the thief comes with only one purpose, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But hallelujah to the Lord! Because Jesus said, I have come for you to have life. And not only for you to have life, and that for you to enjoy life and enjoy it abundantly. The enemy Satan came and he has set up all these things. Drugs, alcohol, vices, pornography, pain, stress, worry, heartache, headaches, anger, depression, anything just to steal your life. Just to steal someone else's life. But then again, let us always be reminded that the reason that we live is to worship the Lord because the Lord came to give us that life. And for us to have that life abundantly. Amen, church. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly. If we want a better life, if we want life itself, clearly our lives must be in Jesus Christ. Do you agree? Yes. I will say it again. If we want life, people, I don't know what you are going through right now. Or glory to God in the highest, if you have been on that situation where you were in the verge of giving up, or it could be that the Lord has placed you around people who are on the verge of giving up. My dear brothers and sisters, we can only win them. If we want life, if we want a better life for all these people, I will say again, it is only possible through Christ. Our lives must be on Christ. Amen? Amen. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And remind me who the Father is again. The Father is the author of life. And the Father is life himself. And we cannot have access to that author. We cannot have access to life. We cannot come to the Father. There is no other way except through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He has come for you to have life. And you, not just that for you to have life, but for you to have life abundantly. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Again, suicide is as a result of struggling to cope up. Suicide is as a result of unmet needs, unmet expectation. Suicide is a result of void, that feeling hopeless, that feeling worthless. But Jesus said, John 6.33, I am the bread of God. 
I am the bread of God. I am He who comes down from heaven that gives life to the world. And Jesus said, Come to me and you will never be hungry. Come to me and you will never be hungry. Believe in me and you will never be thirsty. Amen, church. Amen. Jesus said, I am your provision. I am your supply. I am your satisfaction. I am your abundance. I am the way for you to cope up. I am the way that can fill those voids. I am the way who can met those expectations. I am the way who can give hopeless, hope to the hopeless. I am the one who can give worth to the worthless. I am all that you need, Jesus said. Amen, church. I am the bread of God. Bread, in layman's term, speaks about Provision. And whatever your needs are, those can be addressed by provision. So Jesus is saying to us that I am the bread of life. I am the bread of God. I am your provision. So come to me and you will never be Hungry. Believe in me and you will never be thirsty. Simply come to me and you will never be in need. I am all that you need, Jesus says. Amen, church. No wonder that if you are in the Lord, your only reason, your only purpose is to worship the Lord. Because the Lord is only the Lord is all that you need. Amen? The Lord says, The thief cometh not but only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come for you to have life and for you to enjoy that life abundantly. Amen, church? It should be abundance because you will never be in need. You will never be thirsty. My dear brothers and sisters, if we truly indeed want life that independence brings, come to the Lord. Believe in me, the Lord says. Have life in me. Be saved in me. Amen, church? Amen? Amen? The second that independence brought us is, what did we say? Liberty. And liberty, my dear brothers and sisters, is freedom. Amen? Liberty is freedom. And we live in a free enterprise system. We live in a free enterprise system. Amen? To be honest, the country that we are living in, the United Kingdom, is a champion of that freedom. Amen. Here in the UK, the number one in there is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom to believe in something. So my dear brothers and sisters, we live in a free enterprise system. We live in a free market. We enjoy freedom of speech. We enjoy freedom of movement. I'm, I'm sorry to see you here today, uh, David, because I know you are supposed to be in Spain. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'll ask you later. You were supposed to be flying in Spain last Tuesday, isn't it? I can only be surprised and blessed that you are here with us today. But clearly something happened that you are here. <laughs> there is a reason indeed. Amen. So we have a freedom of movement. As a matter of fact, we will enjoy a free meal today. Spiritually, 
And also physically because there are few people who are celebrating birthday today. Amen. So we live, my dear brothers and sisters, in a free enterprise system. We can all agree. Are we, are we, church, are we enjoying that freedom, that liberty that we have? Amen. We are free. But I know that we can all agree that all of us are not free. I will say again, all of us are not free. You know why? Some of the things that we have talked about earlier, those are the things that does not make us free. Is it not that what people who suffers from depression, anxiety, they say that I am not free. People who are suffering from pain, problems, concern, they tell you they are not free. The enemy, the devil comes to steal that freedom. Galatians 5.1, it says in there, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not sub submit again to a yoke of slavery. I know it's surprising that Paul says this after we became free. After we became free, and then Paul tells us this passage that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm. And do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Do not return again to the same thing that have enslaved you. Amen, church. Just imagine, just think about this. Someone who has been imprisoned for the last 50 years. And when prison and when government tells them, you are free to go. I'm sure that person as much as he can, will leave that prison immediately. Amen? Do you remember, would you imagine that person that after being freed, returned to the prison and say, no, no I want to be here. It does not make sense. It is counterintuitive. That's why Paul tells us that everyone who has been set free, that is the reason why that Christ died for us in order for us to be set free. Amen. But having received that freedom, let us not go back to that slavery that once we were in. You know, the people of Egypt, they were enslaved in Egypt by the Egyptians for 400 years. And after being liberated by the Lord through Moses, throughout the process, they have been telling Moses, they have been telling the Lord, we want to go back to Egypt. We want to go back to Egypt. That is the reason why that none of them, none of those generation was able to enter the promised land. They all perished in the wilderness because they were not thankful to the Lord. They were freed from 400 years and yet the moment that they were freed, there is nothing in their mind but keep on wanting to go back to Egypt. Egypt in this world symbolizes our sin. And I do not have to nomenclate what sin is. We know that. But in spite of that, after meeting the Lord, after we became a Christian or a believer, but we keep on wanting to go back to sin. My dear brothers and sisters, let us receive the same warning that the Egypt, that the people of Israel received. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Let us not go back, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, to the yoke of slavery. Amen. Galatians 5.13, for you were called to freedom, people of God. 
only do not use that freedom as an opportunity to sin. Amen? Do not use that freedom as an opportunity to sin. 2 Peter 2.16 Live as people who are free, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but live your life as a servant of God. Live your life saving that, serving that purpose. The reason I live is to worship you, O Lord. Hallelujah. So after being saved, after claiming to meet the Lord, and the Lord has given me a new name, and that name is called believer, that new name is a called Christian, that new name is a called disciple, my dear brothers and sisters, you know our message last week, after becoming a Christian, what is next? Is that not our message last week? After becoming a Christian, what is next? The next is, walk intently forward towards the promised land and do not keep on wanting back to Egypt. Do not keep on wanting back to the place where you were once a slave. Amen, church. Don't keep on wanting to be called sinner anymore. We received the Lord. The Lord gave us freedom. Amen. Amen. And it gets worse, my dear brothers and sisters, believe me. It gets worse if you keep on going back into sinning. You sin the first time or the first time that you met the Lord, probably someone spoke to you a few passages of the Bible and you were convicted. But if you keep on going back into sinning, eventually you will hear the whole Bible and it does not have an effect on you. Because consciously, Consciously, you have been striving against, fighting against the Holy Spirit who is in you. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Do not return therefore to that bondage of slavery that we were once freed from. Amen, church. Jesus is the only one who can break those chains of slavery that leads to sin and death. But by doing so, like what I've said, Jesus did not give us a freedom to sin. But Jesus gave us a freedom against the power of sin in our lives. Amen, church? And that can only be possible through Christ. That can only be possible through the Lord. Amen? The salvation power of the Lord give us freedom. Freedom from the power of sin. You know, every time in the scriptures, every time that Jesus forgave people, every time that Jesus delivers people, every time that Jesus performs miracle to the life of people, Jesus never say, receive your freedom. You know what Jesus always say? Go and sin no more. That's what Jesus always tells to people. Go and sin no more. I do not know you. Well, I know you. But I don't know what is the quality, what is the nature, the level of our relationship with the Lord. And it could be that you have received the Lord 10 months ago, a year ago. It could be that you have received the Lord years and years ago. But my dear brothers and sisters, today, in this pulpit, let me encourage all of us once again to go and sin no more. Amen. 
That is the only way that one can truly be liberated. Oh, I have been imprisoned for 10 years and I received a certificate of being freed. But after being freed, you choose to stay in prison. Are you called a person who has been liberated? No. You're still called prisoner. So come out, my dear brothers and sisters, from those chains. Amen? Those chains has been broken already. Those prison door has been widely open already. Stand up. Stand firm. Step out. Walk as a free man. Go and sin no more. Amen? Amen. Last but not the least, what does independence brought us? The pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness. You know, if you are a slave, you have no right, you are no entitled for your own happiness. As a matter of fact, Jesus told us a parable in the Bible that there is a slave he spent the whole day working his sweat off. There is a slave working his sweat off. And when his master came, did the master told him, Oh, my slave, come and sit down and I will prepare a drink or a food for you. No, the master came seeing the slave, too tired, exhausted. What did the master say? Slave, prepare a food for me. And when I have done eating and satisfied, that's the only time that you can eat for yourself. So a slave has no entitlement to pursue happiness. You know, we marvel at those pyramids of Egypt. We marvel at those. But if you think about it, those, the life of those slaves who built those pyramids. Amen. They said that in building those pyramids, thousands of life was lost. I am not surprised if majority of those lives were Jews. But my dear brothers and sisters, it is for life that Christ has set us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for in pursuit of happiness that Christ has set us free. Pursuing happiness is what most people is after about. I don't know how many are in the room. Is there 50 of us in the room? You count? I know that each and every single one of these 50 souls are pursuing happiness. Is there anyone in here that is not in pursuit of happiness right now? I believe that all the youngs and the elders are pursuing happiness. All of us, how to become happier, how to have those feelings of joy, satisfaction, contentment, and fulfillment. And from generations to generations, no one has mastered it yet. No one has mastered it yet as an evidence, the high prevalence of suicide that I have said. If someone have mastered it, there should be no cases of this, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Unsurprisingly, you know why? Because man is looking at the wrong place. In pursuing happiness, man is looking at the wrong place. All we need to do is look at the Bible, what does happiness is all about. Are you ready? Shall we? Shall we look at the Bible, what happiness is all about? But there is no point looking at what the Bible says because it's always going to be there if we do not have desire to apply it in our system. Amen. 
The Bible talks about happiness. And although it brings power, but we need to allow that power to work and operate in us. You know? Do you agree with me? Amen, church. In order for that power, in order for that revelation to fully at work in us, we need to receive it. We need to accept it. Job 5.17 Behold, the Bible calls the man happy if they yield in God's correction. If they yield in God's correction, therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. Children, sometimes your elders, your parents, tells you off because they love you. They mean the world to you. They want the best for you. And sometimes, children, we despise those chastening. My dear brothers and sisters, if we want to be happy, the Bible tells us that when the Lord is correcting us, we need to accept that correction. We need to apply that correction in our body, in our system. We have been talking about the Lord the last hour. All we need to do, I said, is apply it in our system in order for it to work. Happy is the man whom God corrected, therefore despise not thou chastening of the Almighty. Psalms 144, 15, Happy are the people that is in such case, yes, happy are the people whose God is their Lord. Amen, church? Amen. If you make the Lord, if you make God your Lord, and even the sovereign God your dwelling, says happiness overflows. Goodness and mercy, King David says, shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Proverbs 14, 21. He hath despised his neighbor, sinneth. But he hath mercy on the poor, happy are they. Amen. It's not just despising your neighbor. Engaging ourselves into sinning. Indulging in sin does not bring in happiness, my dear brothers and sisters. So we ought to be holy. For God, our Master and Lord, is holy. Amen? Proverbs 16, 20, He that handle a matter wisely shall find good. And those trust in the Lord, happy are they. Amen? So again, trust in the Lord, church. James 5.11 Behold, we count them happy, them which endure. Amen, church. Peter 3.14 But if you surrender for righteousness' sake, happy are you. Amen. So like what we have said, people all throughout the ages are in pursuit of happiness, but no one seems to have mastered it because man is looking at the wrong place. But now, through the word of God, the secret that has been so elusive from generation to generation, the Lord God had made it obvious for the sake and purpose of the people who believe in God. So my dear brothers and sisters, now, today, it is possible to pursue happiness. And that is by pursuing God. Amen? Matthew 6.13, 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be added unto us. Amen, church? And to end it up, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no question that God has blessed us.
There is no question that God has blessed our nation, the Philippines. Has blessed this nation that we live in. Has blessed the nations of the world in so many ways. But I believe that we need to wake up spiritually. We need to wake up spiritually. Wake up you who slumber and sleep. Wake up. Wake up and receive that freedom that the Lord is giving us. Amen. Amen. We need to wake up spiritually. You know, if I close my eyes, I can point guilty, 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 guilty. Why that I know that? Because that's what the Bible says. We are guilty, my dear brothers and sisters. None of us aren't. And because all of us are guilty, we need to wake up. We need to wake up spiritually because if we don't, we are walking on a thin line. We are walking on a thin line. Romans 13, 11, it says in there, I pick up the New Living Translation because of the, the word urgent in there. This is all the more Urgent, it says in there. In other translation, the urgent is translated otherwise. This is all the more urgent. Urgent meaning, I know we have been here already for the last hour or two, and I know that you are busy. I know that you are have an appointment, and I know that you probably cannot wait to go. But my dear brothers and sisters, there is no more pressing and urgent than this. This is urgent. For you know how late it is. Time is running out. Therefore, all of us who are guilty, wake up! For salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Amen. I know that none of us in here will going to believe in the Lord for the very first time. I know that all of us in here will claim at one way or another that I believe in the Lord. But the word of the Lord for us today is, I have given it all. I can stand here in front and say that there is no more second Christ coming. Well, there is a second coming of Christ. Don't get me wrong. What I meant to say is, Christ has been given to suffer for us. There is no more second Christ coming to suffer for us. Amen, church. Amen. The same Christ who came to suffer for us will return again. But this time in glory. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, I cannot give emphasis enough. Wake up. This is urgent. People next to you, can you shake the people next to you? Come on, guys, boys, shake me, shake me, shake me. Shake others, shake them, come on, shake them. If they fall out of their chair, then hallelujah, the Lord will bless you. Because you have surely and clearly wake them up properly. Yes, yeah, shake them up to the point that they fall in their chair. Because you know that by doing that, you have indeed awakened them. My dear brothers and sisters, this is urgent. Urgent because it is now late. Urgent because time has run out already. Wake up for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Amen, church. We are the citizens of all this nation. And we are responsible for our nations. And it is time for us to wake up. It is time for us to turn back to God. The question is, will God send 
a spiritual awakening once again to this country, to this nation? Have you answered that question? Have you asked those questions? Anyone asking that question that, Lord, will there be another spiritual awakening upon this nation? Are you asking that question, my dear brothers and sisters? Or are all of us desiring for that to happen? Are we? Amen? Amen? The question is, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we pressing on? Are we kneeling down to the Lord and crying, Lord, send awakening. Send awakening. You know, I have a revelation last time. We have been waiting for another Pentecost, but it's not biblical to receive another Pentecost. You know why? Because Pentecost is the giving of the Holy Spirit. The Lord cannot give something which He already gave. The moment, even so, if you come and stand here in the front today and you receive the Lord, Pentecost has come to you because the Holy Spirit will be given to you. Amen. But that is not to say that there could be another awakening. And we pray for that. Amen, church. Otherwise, if you read something in the passage that says that there is another Pentecost happening, please come and correct me or come and we'll sit down together and we'll read the scriptures. I know that people, the Bible, prophesy another spiritual awakening, but it does not mean that spiritual awakening is another Pentecost. Pentecost is the giving of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit has arrived. The Holy Spirit has been given. It is up to us, my dear brothers and sisters, to cry for that Holy Spirit to intervene. Amen? Amen. Again, are we, are we praying for another awakening? Yes. Amen? And the question is, we need to start something. Believing without action is dead. That is not what faith is about according to James. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, the pressing question is how desperate we are for God to send another spiritual awakening. Because if we are desperate enough, then even this afternoon, we need to press on. We need to start praying about it. Amen, church. Will you join me in that prayer this afternoon? Amen. Can we bring in the music team? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Can I invite each and everyone to stand up? You know, church, people of God, people who are here with us to honor the Lord this afternoon, all the good gifts comes from our Father in heaven. And it is the Lord's will and purpose to meet us today. It is the Lord's will and purpose to even manifest Himself today. The question is, are we committed? The question is, do we desire for that to happen this afternoon? Church, let us be in one heart. Just those disciples during the time of Pentecost, that they were gathered in one heart, pressing on, pressing on, pressing on. In order for things to happen, we need to press on. We need to press on. People of God, the reason that we live is to worship the Lord. And clearly, we are failing in that purpose. 
Can we ask the Lord this afternoon to redeem us and say that, Lord, no holds barred. I just want to hold on to that purpose and reason that I am here this afternoon. And I just want to worship you. I just want to honor you. And if you are someone who after believing the Lord, after professing faith to the Lord, and yet you go back to that slave master who once, once enslaved in you, and you just want to come back to the Lord, this afternoon is the perfect time. It is urgent because it's not running late. It's already late. The coming of the Lord is nigh.
hands that night. If we confess in our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God has raised him up from the dead, then you are saved. Then you have access to life. Then you have access to liberty. Then you have access of happiness. Come on, people of God, talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. You are in the right place. You are in the right time where people around you will understand you. People around you will not judge you. Because you know why? You know why? They are as guilty as you are. People of God, this is the time where we come to the Lord and say that, Lord, I fail miserably. Lord, there is no goodness in me. Lord, I cannot even lift up a finger to better my situation. But thank you because I believe by faith that if this man, what he is telling is true, apparently, I can come to you even this very moment without any rituals. I just have to come to you with a pure heart, with a pure intention, with a pure desire to say that, Lord, forgive me. I repent from all my innumerable sins. I repent from all those multiple moments where I have sinned against you, where I have failed you. I confess in my mouth that I am a sinner, that I have fallen short of your mercy and grace. But with the same mouth I confess, knowing and believing that Jesus, you are Lord. And I want you to be my Lord. And I want you to be a part of my life. And I want you to be a part of my everything. And I want you to give me life, to give me liberty to give me happiness that only you can bring. And I confess in my mouth that you have died for me. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you up from the dead. I know my dear brothers and sisters, let's trust the word of the Lord for who He is. Those promises are not wishful thinking. Those are the very promise to each and every one of us this afternoon. Can I invite each and every one of us, please? Both the young and old, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let us close our eyes. Let us close our eyes. Let us close our eyes. Even people in the front, close your eyes. Close your eyes. And can I ask, listen to your heart. Listen to that still, small voice talking to you right now. Even people online, join us. And if that still small voice is talking to you, 
is convicting you right here, right now, telling you that my son, my daughter, my children, my beloved, pay attention because this is urgent. This is urgent because the time is late. This is urgent because the coming of the Lord is nigh. Than we first believe. If you believe within those convictions and you just want to have your heart be right in the Lord. I don't care if you've been a Christian for 50 years. But you can always rededicate a moment to the Lord. Can I ask people who heeds that still small voice, pay attention, all eyes closed, declaration of faith, declaration of desire, just raise those right hands and be counted. Just those, raise those right hand and be counted. All eyes closed. Raise those hands and be counted. Raise those hands and be counted. Anyone? Hallelujah. And those people, let me pray for you. I could have asked you to follow after me, but it does not serve the purpose of asking people to close their hands. You will be talking in, on top of your voice. But if you are convicted to do so, you are welcome. just want to pray for you. And if you are one of them, just follow that prayer in your heart. It is the message. Lord, thank you for the life of this son, of this daughter who are recommitting their lives to you this afternoon. It is between you and them, Lord. I do not even claim to be in the middle, to be the representative of this. It is between you and them, Father God. And honor the life of this son, of this daughter. Honor their desire to once again this afternoon surrender their lives unto you. Once again this afternoon confess in their mouth, Father, that you are all that they need. Confess in their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised him up from the dead. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for once again this afternoon securing them in you. And Father, thank you because Whatever happens from here forth forward, we know and we do believe that their life is listed in that precious book of life and that name will never be blotted out. Thank you very much that you are going to pour out your Holy Spirit to be upon them as a guarantee of what is to come. Thank you very much. And Father, thank you for the lives of these people. For that realization that their purpose and reason of existence is to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big clap offering? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you because out of this afternoon you have made a new creation out of the lives of all those people who surrendered and trust in you and if that is uh, if you are one of them thank you very much I speak blessing in your life and you are the son and daughters and the children of God and you are accepted in the family and the company of heaven may God bless you and may God continue to walk with you with the company of the Holy Spirit that continue to lead you to that path that leads to righteousness in life. May God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Once again, can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Uh, yes, 
It's a uh, Independence Day. Araw ng kalayaan. Are you free? Amen. Amen. Who are free here to be the servant of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I say I am free, you shout, Yes, I'm free. Yes, Amen. I'm free. Amen. Hallelujah. And on that part about love, there's a post there. I want everyone to roam around and hug that person and to share that love that comes from the Lord. Amen. We are all in love. We know how to love. We love because God far, first love, love us first. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's enjoy and uh, continue to praise our God. Hallelujah. Let's go. 
Okay, okay. Uh, where are the singers? Singers, singers. Lord Hallelujah Most gracious Lord and heavenly Father Thank you for the gift of life And all the more thank you That the reason of that life Is so that we can worship you Is so that we can serve you Father thank you for this remarkable and wonderful moment upon the lives of our family members, Father God. Including all the families that they represent. Thank you for the life of our dearly beloved Irene, for the lives of our dearly beloved uh, brethren, leaders of the church, Brother Alan, Sister Grace, for the life of our dearly beloved daughter in faith, Gliza, and the youngest, our dearly beloved son in the Lord, Jack Jack. We thank you so much, Father, for the gift of life. We thank you for the lives of their parents, whom you have used as an instrument and in bringing them forth in this world. Father, we can only thank you for the wonderful opportunity and privilege to be a part of their lives. To be able to have that honor and privilege to worship you and serve you alongside them. Thank you very much. Father God, thank you because we know and you do believe that you are going to continue to pour forth your spirit to be upon them. To guide them, to lead them, not only for the fulfillment, of their personal goals and aspirations in life. But thank you because you who began a good works in them will bring it to completion up until the day of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you very much because with long life and prosperity, you will satisfy them. Thank you very much, Father God, because through the lives of these brethren, lives, souls, multitudes will be ushered in your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for all the talents, the skills, the giftings, the operation, the manifestation that you have uh, blessed them with. Thank you that they can return that back to you to satisfy your purposes and your glory. We thank you, Lord, for the lives of their family that you may continue, Father, to help them move around, live, raised in that family, Father God, where you are the head. And for this church, thank you that you're gonna continue to equip us that we may be able to each and everyone serve one another, each and everyone encourage and sharpen one another that where you will be the one to gain. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we just, uh, can we just end in our prayer? And then I'm sure that family and friends want to come and take pictures with them. 
Father, thank you so much for today. Lord, we are indebted that you have allowed us the opportunity to come to you. Indeed, better is one day in your courts than thousand elsewhere. Father, we pray that everything that we have experienced here today, everything that we have witnessed, everything that we have heard from you today, Lord, we pray, may it never depart us. But Lord, we pray that you use it to equip us to continue to grow in you, to pursue you. Lord, let everything that we have heard today accepted in our heart with gladness, joy, and thanksgiving. But Father, give us that duty and purpose to go away and dread that and to base that according to the Scriptures in order to first receive my first-hand revelation in order for second to make sure that it is in line with your word. Father, thank you for the life of all the people that you have gathered here today, people who joined us online, especially those people who accepted and received you today. Father, let the joy of being freed, of being liberated from the world, may they continue to enjoy with your Holy Spirit walking with them. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. And all the, the people of God says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the visitors of... Uh, Oh, who wants to come take a picture? Oh. Okay, as we move around, uh, David wants to say something. Just a, Can I just say something about your flag? Oh, it's an amazing flag. Um, I've just felt the Lord was showing me something about it. Now, I don't know who designed the flag, but I see the blood of Jesus on that flag, the red. I see the white for holiness. I see Father, Son, Holy Spirit in the stars. Right? I see Jesus in the center, the light of the world. And I see the blue, because I could wonder what the blue was, I felt it's the sky. The sky. Amen. Royalty. Amen. Oh Lord. That's the royalty of the Lord. Lord. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon and he's coming out of the sky. Amen. Amen. Yeah. For the rapture of the church, the true church. Amen. Okay. And I just felt uh, that flag is amazing. It's not quite as good as the English flag, <laughs> but it's nearly there. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you why. The English flag is a white background with holiness with a red cross on it. Think about it. The red cross of Jesus on a white flag. Anyway, no, but this is amazing too. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all.